back boys and girls for another special edition of the patreon series joining me tonight is the man the myth the legend mr jay widener has made his return to the program jay widener is a renowned author filmmaker and hermetic scholar considered to be the modern day indiana jones for his ongoing worldwide quests to find clues to mankind's spiritual destiny via ancient societies and artifacts his body of work offers great insight into the circumstances that have led to his current global crime Crisis. He is the director of the powerful and insightful documentaries Kubrick's Odyssey, Infinity, The Ultimate Trip, and the film Shasta. There's so many other documentaries he's been a part of and made. Jay was featured in History Channel's documentary The Lost Book of Nostradamus and was associate producer and featured in the History Channel special Nostradamus 2012. He also came out with Jesse Ventura, by the way, if I remember correctly. You know, the guy's done it all. I'm so glad he's here. Boys and girls, put your hands together for Mr. Jay Widener. And join me right now, live and direct, is Mr. Jay Widener. How's it going, my friend? Uh, good. Hot, but good. Surviving. Yep. Especially in these uh, troubled times. You know, I was watching an old interview from you. Well, there's several interviews I watched from you from way back, and you were even talking about how chaotic people have been acting going back to like 2021 but here we are in 2023 and it seems like it's increased in terms of human behavior and how we've sort of have been treating one another and it's been awful jay as you know yeah i have a good friend who just had an onset of mental illness in like three weeks and it was so fast and it was shocked me and he went from a a normal guy to um, schizophrenic and uh, or whatever they call it nowadays uh, in three weeks. And it was it was shocking. And I, that was my first real up close um, connection with mental illness and how fast it can come on and how insane it really is and how destructive it really is. Oh, yes. Yes. And I also remember you saying another thing about social media how some people blame social media for a lot of the behavior we're seeing uh, today do you still feel that way i think social media is uh, uh absolutely uh the, the um the medium by which all of this madness is going on um you know uh, those of us who were uh, optimistic thought that social media was going to be a good thing we didn't know that it would immediately gravitate down to the lowest common denominator, which it is. And um, and so, yeah, that's just facilitating the uh, mental disorders. And so is the media and the educational system and uh, and, and everything. So there's a, it's a huge, uh, huge problem. It's going to get worse. I, I was talking to a person yesterday who is an absolutely amazing uh, medical uh, researcher. She researches all sorts of things that are going on uh, in the medical field, and uh, she's very intelligent. And she came back to me and told me that they're um, that they started running out of uh, drugs, the pharmaceutical companies, and they're putting placebos in. They're doing blood tests on people, and they don't have the drug that's prescribed in them. And 
uh, they don't know what to do or how to how to face this situation. Um, and it's just going to get worse. And um, China's beginning to hold back um, all of these drugs uh, from us. But she said that the one thing that the Chinese are going to do, it looks like, is they're going to hold back the hormones from us. They make all the hormones. And they're going to hold back the hormones and say there's giant shortages. This is going to cause a certain group of people that depend on hor daily hormone doses to keep uh, the... Um, I don't know how to delicately put this to keep uh, to keep their uh, gender affirmation going mm. that um, they're going to lose their mind and uh, because they're not going to be any hormones and they're actually going to regress back to what they were before and this is going to cause all sorts of uh, incredible dire and she tells me that this is all being orchestrated so that it all it all happens at once and she thinks it's going to happen sometime here within the next year where literally we run completely out of drugs and um uh, and unless you understand medical what's going on in the medical world you, you gotta understand that like 75 percent of the american people are on one kind of prescription drug or another and a lot of them depend on it for their mental health right their physical health and when that rug gets pulled out from under um it's gonna be a very serious moment Yes, it, it seems like the end times are nearly here, Jay. Yeah, they are. Which is a topic that, you know, I love discussing for whatever morbid reason, but I'm starting to see it all unfold and it's been happening the last five years. Every day we are getting closer and closer to the uh, tipping point, in my opinion. And uh, not to mention, just like you said, the mental health and, you know, everyone's rent is going up, especially out here in California. The rent just increased. Uh, yep. by a lot and uh, you know not to mention not to mention just everything is um way out of control um the prices are high all over the place you're taxed for every damn thing out here in california and not to mention we keep giving more and more money to the ukraine well i mean they they have all the uh, receipts for the bribery of our president and so he has to do what they say so that's why he, they're getting hundreds of billions of dollars is because if they stop giving him that money, then they're going to release all the information on what's been going on and they and they're holding it over his head. Um, you know, so uh, the war in Ukraine is going to go on, um, probably going to get worse, although I do not think it's going to go nuclear, um, I hope. And, you know, we need to take this moment of crisis, you know, and um, and figure out how to solve the crisis. I my um my I live in a little tiny nowhereville in southern Colorado and my uh, property taxes went up thirty percent this Ooh. year one year thirty percent and uh, uh, I'm hearing uh, from actuaries at insurance companies that if you live uh, out near woods in California or Colorado or any place that's prone to fires your house insurance is going to skyrocket to like $30,000 a year. Yikes. And they're, they're flushing everybody out of the country. That's what's going to happen now. Now that the uh, they've got the medical crisis uh, uh, kind of complete uh, and everybody's ran out into the country to get away from uh, everything, uh, now they're going to do a bunch of machinations to slowly push us back into the smart cities right. that they're building. That's what if that's what I feel like they are doing. And if you remember correctly, they wanted to break down different parts of California, different sections, different di districts, rather. Yes. Um, several years ago. And now we have all these immigrants all over the place. And by the way, I live in Southern California in a small town called El Centro. It's a border town, not far mm -hmm. away from Calexico, which is another border town. And yep. um, you have Mexicali right there. And, yep. you know, I'm of mixed race, Jay. And, uh, you know, I'm someone who I am Hispanic. I claim to be Hispanic because it, it offends a lot of people. So I, I like doing that. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But regardless, you know, I want to see people come across legally, not illegally. And being out here, I know what that means. A lot of people take advantage of a lot of people just trying to make it out here. And it's a terrible thing because that leads to them being trafficked 
being harassed, being killed, being taken advantage of by the coyote or yep. or even the border patrol themselves. And that's how they get involved in organ harvesting and, you know, all this disgusting stuff that goes on. It really does go on. It's not just some crazy conspiracy, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not this QAnon bullshit that you, you see, you know, it is the real deal here. Yeah, I have family that live right there about uh, eight miles away from the border there, right in your area, real close family. And uh, they're they're Latino and, you know, white and um, great people, super uh, intelligent, uh, super industrious. And, you know, they feel the same way you do. They they, they, they came across legally and, uh, you know, 25 years ago and they want everybody else to come in legally. Right. And of course they do because they live right there. They don't yeah. want all that chaos going on in their life. Exactly. They've got enough problems. But, um, I, you know, the, the thing with Hispanics, which I've really... Um, uh, really become interested in is how the, the 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 Democrats brought them in, thinking that they were some kind of mind controlled uh, <laughs> right, right. people that would just do what what the Democrats want, and it, that is not what's going on in my view. Um, I'm I'm seeing like I'm seeing all of my Latino and Latina friends abandoning the left and the Democrats in, at like in a huge numbers. And they're very conservative. Um, my uh, my uh, the the my very close relatives, though know, they're raising their children, um, a conservative Catholic, and uh, you know they're getting communion and the whole thing, which uh, I find astounding. I mean, I was raised Catholic, but I find it astounding that um, that the Latino population is actually very very family oriented, very yeah, very conservative, and don't like. BS. Oh, I agree. Here, most people have like a kid at the age of like right out of high school, basically, you know, even my in today's world, I don't think it's a smart idea to bring any children in right now. Things are as chaotic as they've ever been. So I have a firm stance against not bringing a child into this world, especially right now. I hope that's not like a selfish um, thing for some people to understand. I don't but. know if I agree with that. I, I, I think that the right people need to bring children into the world. I, I, I'm not as pessimistic about things. I think in the short term, Things are going to get pretty bad, especially if we don't change things politically. But I think we're moving in. Well, I, I say this yeah. all the time. We're we've gone now. We are now fully in the Aquari age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius, and right, right. Moving and we're and we're what what happened is and this is really interesting. I'm making a documentary about this in about four months. No, no, I mean about a year. I got two other things. Right, right. First. But. Um, what happened is, is that the Piscean generation, and, and this would be the generation of people that were born around the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 20th century, uh, they, you know, did their astrology and they saw that the age of Aquarius was coming at some indeterminate time in the future. And so they, they began to try to craft the Aquar, excuse me, the Aquarian age at the last hundred years of the Piscean age. And you can't do that. You, you can't do that. It's a different time. It's like when you're, when you're 14, you're going into puberty. When you're seven, you lose your teeth. When you're 21, you're an adult. You can't do anything about any of that. That right. just happens. Yeah. That's what life is about. And so you cannot craft the Aquarian age until you go into Aquarius. And so Aleister Crowley and all these occultists and Madame Blavatsky and they're all trying to craft what the Aquarian age was mm -hmm. going to be and they manipulated us on a grand scale uh, with rock and roll and movies and all this stuff trying to get us into this kind of mindset which was still a Piscean mindset it wasn't an Aquarian mindset only now is the Aquarian mindset beginning to emerge and the Aquarian mindset is uh, much different than these people that were, you know, a hundred years ago or less were trying to craft. Uh, the Aquarian mindset that we're going into is going to be low tech married with high tech. It's going to be um, people banding together to grow their own food and to protect themselves. It's going to be um, a high, um, oh, the only people that will survive will be the highly intelligent. 
So there's going to be a culling of the not highly intelligent. That's actually what's going on in front of our eyes right now. And that's been going on since the beginning of 2020, um, where literally people who are dumb are making mistakes and dying, and people who are smart are not making mistakes and living. That is exactly how you create a highly intelligent population, which is where we're headed. And so all of this is going to happen in a, in a really kind of, um, I hate to say it, but a bloody way. Uh, the Piscians aren't going to give up power. They're going to continue their centralized command, their hierarchical um, structures, um, their wars, and their toxic uh, environmental uh, things that they do, and all of that. Of course, always saying that they're not doing that and saying that everybody else is doing that. Uh, but that hypocrisy also is Piscean, and it's going to go and be jettisoned out too. Um, but the Aquarians have to be patient. Um, it's our time. Uh, we're going to win. I don't know if, if you guys have noticed, but have you noticed that nothing really seems like um, it matters anymore? Right. Notice that? It kind of does yeah, feel like that. Movies don't matter. The music doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, nothing seems to matter anymore. That's because that's all artifacts of the Piscean age. And we're looking at it now and going, oh, this is a bunch of crap. And, and, and so, as, and, and so and, and it doesn't matter to us anymore. But there's going to be new things and new forms that are, haven't emerged yet that are going to matter to us a lot. And there's going to be, it's going to be basic things. It's going to be family. It's going to be good food, clean water, good friends, good music, hanging out, and, and, and not, the, not the technocratic future that the Pisceans are trying to create. The World Economic Forum is a Piscean creation trying to maintain control over the emerging um, uh, 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 the emerging thing that's happening here. And so that's why they can't be trusted because they're a top-down organization. Um, all the things that are wrong with the Piscians, you know, the Piscians had things that were good. Um, you know, they had um, orchestras and uh, movies and, and things that they created, but they also created a lot of really bad stuff like centralization and uh, giant armies and wars and dropping bombs from planes on innocent people. And that era is going away, but they're not going to go easy. It's going to be a really serious, bloody fight. It's happening right now. New York Times came out today with an article by some woman absolutely trashing RFK Jr., and in and in, in, in total uh in ways that were like wrong, just wrong. They were wrong. Mm -hmm. I know the fact they were wrong. But it doesn't matter. He scares them because what's happening now is we're getting a group of politicians that started with Trump, but now it's moving away from Trump and going outwards where they're starting <laughs> They're starting to sound like Alex Jones or, or Jay Widener. And um, right. uh, and that has to be scaring the hell out of them. And um, and so we're going to see this. You're watching it. We the need these kind of personalities, by the way. RFK. Yeah, Pardon me? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. I was just saying we need uh, these kind of personalities that you're talking about here to become uh, president. Or hopefully, you know, people yeah. like um, him and uh, Jesse Ventura, another guy I yeah. wish would want to. I wish he would want to do that, but he's more apathetic towards the whole thing, and he always has been, which is uh, unfortunate for America, really. Yeah, I know, Jesse. He's a good guy, but yeah, you're right. He does not want it. He lives on the beach in Baja, yeah. and he just wants to stay there and soak up the sun. Smart. I don't, blame him. I don't blame him either. I mean, why would you really want that kind of power? And that leads me to believe most people that want to obtain that kind of power, they're probably a little off just the tiny bit, I, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, Just a little it's bit. Not, it's not that uh, power corrupts. That is, that's not true. You know, they say, oh, power corrupts, right? No, it's not that. It's corrupt people seek power. Right, right. That's what's going on here. And then the corrupt people recruit corrupt people because they know they can be corrupted. You know, um, a very um, a, a very wealthy guy I knew once um, 
uh, I'm going to be careful here. He wanted me to testify in a court case for him. And so I said, well, I don't know if I want to do that. Let's talk about it. And he was offering me money on the side, you know, a good amount of money. And so we went out to dinner. And he started telling me what he wanted me to do. And I was like, dude, I'm not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you're you did crazy. it. You're crazy. And he looked at me, he got, he got this close to me. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, an honest man, that means you're dangerous. Ooh. So, you know, that's actually the truth. That's how they think. Yeah, well, I'm glad you didn't get involved in any of that. And I know you were probably still mentioned in maybe a lawsuit or two that might have passed already. One, yeah. I don't think you're so safe. Still getting, sued. Got, 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 still getting sued by you know who. Oh, boy. Secret astronaut. And, still. Uh, I hear it's gone up the docket. And my, they're going to hear my dismissal plea here. Yikes. Hopefully for the next few weeks. And that'll be great. I thought all that was all over. I thought that was over by now. Oh, no. God damn. My lawyers haven't even put in a motion in the case for o over two years. Over two years. Yikes. It was June 6, 2021, the last time my lawyers put in a motion, which was to dismiss. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Ago. Yeah, that's. I was hoping this would already have been over and done with already, yet you're telling me this is still an active case. Yep. Damn. It won't be for long, but it is now. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was meant to be gut wrenching, I guess. That's why the, that the guy did it to me. But, um, he doesn't know that I actually understand the law and I worked with my attorneys and um, I, I didn't hardly get dinged at all, but he's getting dinged. I see. Well, I'm not going to be asking you as many questions as they asked uh, Donald Trump in that last inter interview, which was not good, by the way. I, I don't know what was um, Donald uh, thinking, by the way, giving that sort of detailed interview. I don't know, man. That was a really weird interview. <laughs> it, it was. I, his advisor screwed up. I would have never let that happen. Ooh, I know. That was a bit of a hiccup there, right? Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, people don't under, don't understand though, that Trump's supporters don't care about any of that. That's so true. the only people they're working on is like I say, these crazy people that are going mentally ill and they're going mentally ill because they're constantly being fed this dichotomy in the media. Right. And so the, the, they're actually causing schizophrenia, which is what my the film after my next film is about, ah. about how they're causing the mental illness with their mind control MK Ultra programs. Right. And, and we all know that stems from uh, the media manipulation that's been going on yeah. for uh, forever now, thanks to, you know, thanks to the feds out there. Yeah, it really started, I, read, I think, around the early 60s is when it started. Right, with Operation uh, yeah, Mockingbird. They, mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they did their uh, their MK Ultra experiments in the 50s and figured out what to do. And then they kind of took it national in the 60s. And now it's like the whole everything. Yeah. So that's why nothing matters anymore, because we all now know that it's all just a gigantic manipulation. Pretty and, much. So we, there really isn't anything yeah. there. It stinks, really, because, I mean, now we bow down to our masters who are corporations. You know, they become they became rather bigger than government. And when that happens, it's a done deal. So now we all bow down to these corporations. It's a horrible thing, Jay. OK, so what happened is and this is my next film. Yes, sir. I'll be out here soon. JFK X solving the crime of the century. What happened is, is that. Um, that the, the Kennedy brothers went after organized crime uh, during the Kennedy administration. And they, the Kennedys thought that they had an idea of how serious and big organized crime was, but they soon discovered that organized crime was about 50 times bigger than even they imagined and ensconced into every aspect of American life. And so the Kennedys realize that they could not defeat organized crime. Um, and, and, and then actions happened after that, which have become historical um, conspiracies. And um, before the Kennedy brothers, no one in the federal government ever looked at organized crime or even actually admitted that it existed. After the Kennedy brothers, no one has ever looked at organized crime. So or what happened is, is that 
Meyer Lansky, who was a genius, he he realized that they were all going to go to jail eventually. And so he began in the 1950s introducing, and the 40s, introducing um, the corporate uh, mob model, which was that the mob simply just goes and buys up legitimate businesses and then use those businesses as fronts for all of their activities. And so that's what that was. And when And when they made The Godfather in 72, that was pretty much them coming out of the closet and saying, "Yeah, yeah, that's we we we're here. We kill people. We're bad, but we're family guys too, you know. We're handsome and and all that." So um, then the corporations took over the entire. The mob took over the corporations. The corporations took over all of the small businesses in our country, and now the corporate now the mob run corporation. It's become the WEF, and they're trying to take over and basically the entire world. Ooh, well, that's a lot to uh, consume there. And by the way, what's the name of this one, uh, Jay? Uh, the next one that's coming out in, in a couple of months, it's all done, is called JFKX. Oh, solving like that. the crime of the century, in which we solve once and for all the JFK assassination. Who did it? What happened? In great detail. What do you make of LBJ, by the way? Do you think he had prior knowledge of what was going to happen? Oh, yeah. yeah LBJ. I think he knew. Uh, definitely had prior knowledge and yeah. uh, was the chief beneficiary of uh, whatever happened on November yeah. 22nd, 1963. So, yeah, he knew. He was telling his, uh, his uh, uh, lover the night before that he wouldn't have to worry about the Kennedys anymore after tomorrow. By the way, we were talking about, you know, the 50s, 60s timeline, and we're talking about the CIA. We talked about the, we meant, well, you mentioned the age of Aquarius, that sort of uh, movement that was going on during that time. And I forgot to mention um, Charles Manson. Some people were even saying that he worked, not directly, but he was kind of like an asset for the CIA. I'm not oh, sure no, if I believe, was he? I'm not, I don't know what to believe. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, uh, my. When he was... He was hanging out at the Haight-Ashbury Free Medical Clinic in San Francisco, and uh, Dr. Jolly West, who was the, uh, the directly underneath Sidney Gottlieb, the head of the MK Ultra programs, had an office in that building at the same exact time. Now, what was oh, Sidney shit. Gottlieb and, and and Jolly West? What were what was it, what were they working on in their MK Ultra programs? Highly dosed people with LSD and then feeding them new age nonsense. Mm. And they said it worked. You got people to control them. That's what Charlie was doing with those girls. You're right. He was bombing them with LSD and feeding them new age nonsense. It's clearly obvious. There's a great book, uh, Chaos. I can't remember the name of the writer. I've written to him several times. We've had correspondence. It just has come out in the last year. The guy took 20 years to write it. It's called Chaos, the CIA, Charlie Manson, and I don't know what, what the title is. But oh, I see it, yes. Absolutely incredible book. Uh, everybody, it should be required reading. And and Manson was part of it. And it, that's how he slipped through the cracks. I had a feeling. He, the guy was constantly breaking parole and not getting in trouble. Right. He was constantly uh, uh, breaking the law and not getting arrested. Uh, the sheriff's department in L.A. County just constantly overlooking what was going on at the at the Spawn Ranch. And, um, and, 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 and there may have been many hits by the Charlie Manson gang, not probably, just the ones that we know about. Yeah, not the famous and, and ones. They were, and they were political hits, especially the LaBianca family who was killed after the Tate uh, murders. Right. They were mob, and it was clearly a, a mob-inspired hit. And the mob was working with the LAPD. Mickey Cohen who was working with the with the LAPD. It was clearly known that the LAPD was just another uh, apparatus of yeah. the L.A. mob. I mean, and, and so what happened is, yeah. is, is yes, the mob came in and they took over and they became corporations, but they also married the intelligence agencies. They became one. And so we have this unholy alliance of, of, of the murderers within the uh, uh, mob and uh, a highly intelligent 
uh, agents working in the CIA and other agencies who are now commiserating directly with the mob. And, um, you know, I don't know what to say. No, I hear like, you. Nobody ever talks about this. It's probably I the heard. most important thing that's ever happened in U.S. history. Correct. And just it's completely quiet. Nobody I had, says a word. Yeah, I had my speculation about all that, especially with him using acid. LSD rather um, and you, just just of what he did and got away with for such a long time I always thought perhaps he was an acid for the CIA and of course the book you mentioned is called Chaos Charles Manson the CIA and the secret history of the 60s by oh, Tom O'Neill what a great book what a killer book everybody should read that book it is just like whoa the guy did a great job what's his name again the writer there's Tom O'Neill and Dan yeah Tom O'Neill Tom O'Neill, yeah, he's great. He charges a thousand dollars to do an interview, so I Pipe can't hear him. Oh, so he wants a he wants one grand. Well, he's apparently you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Oh, I from see. From researching the book, and he has to pay it off. I'm not sure that's a business I would use, but you know, hey. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, yes, and and when, and then you look the Ted Kaczynski. Uh, went to Harvard when he was 16, and he was involved in uh, the LSD uh, mind control programs at Harvard. And they LSD bombed him and, and, and pretty much perverted his brain into believing what he believed, and then he went out and acted on it. Right. No different than what we are seeing today, in my opinion. It yeah. seems like all of these are just, it all comes in cycles, as you know, Jay. Yeah, the, 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 they've really stepped it up now, where the cognitive dissonance is so deep right. uh, that we can't, we don't know whether, whether to crap or go blind. We're and, dumbed down now. Um, That's the problem. The majority is really dumbed down, and it's you know me and you and a lot of people that do listen to this. You know, we are the um, we're not the majority. Obviously, we are a small demographic in this pool of of um, I, I hate to say it, but there's lots of idiots out there. You know, people that shouldn't be breeding either. In my opinion you know i have these far beliefs that you know you should be required to license to breed but that you know again that's a little out there but it's how i feel sometimes Jay. <laughs> that's it's how i feel coming. uh anywho yeah. anywho jay um happy summer solstice by the way yeah happy uh non-cold season yeah it's it stinks it's only 100 out here Oof, plus humidity right. plus humidity too. So it's worse than Florida right now out here. And yeah, I'm sticking to my chair. You know, my back is sticking to the chair, Jay. It's it's not a it's not a pretty side back here. <laughs> no, and we got uh we got fires coming in from Texas now, uh blowing in. Uh, not real bad, but uh here where I live, we have the four horsemen of the uh summer apocalypse are uh uh mosquitoes, heat, fire, and the worst of all, tourists. Oh, yeah. You don't want them around. They're everywhere. Yeah, they will ruin everything. They spend money, but, I, you know, they clog up the streets, and they don't know what they're doing, and they can't drive on mountain roads. And <laughs> Right. And, Jay, you know, I hate to do this, but we're going to hit a bit of a speed bump here. I know we are, because I'm going to mention a name that you don't even like to mention. He who cannot be named. Uh, this gentleman, I, I I heard you make a reference to him on another show a long, I don't know how long ago it was, but you mentioned uh, another gentleman by the name of Michael. Well, you referenced him, Lieutenant Colonel Michael. Oh, yeah, yes. Michael. You know, he's been on this program a lot of times before he even died as well, and he really fancied me for whatever reason. He was making really? claims that I was his favorite host. He really loved being on here and a lot of people gave me a lot of flack for it they're like why are you interviewing him why are you humanizing michael aquino and i just thought you know we're i'm doing a show i'm asking him about the presidio i'm doing this i'm doing that and of course he had an answer for everything and people were saying well you know he's playing you he's taking you for a ride that's all he's doing but i gotta be honest jay you know i talked to him a few times off air and he was obviously polite i, I talked to his wife lilith they were polite to me, but then again, you know, anyone could be polite to you. It doesn't really mean shit, but do you think he took me for a ride, Jay? Well, I didn't hear the show, so Obviously, I can't yeah, say. Right. And, um, but, um, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to comment about uh, the uh, military MK Ultra programs and uh, with specific names. And Well, he's the guy. Uh, I didn't even know that he died. When did he die? He, well, they're saying he died... 
back and you know this is this is out there by the way i believe he died let me look it up really quickly here not too long ago by the way um let's see again he wasn't in very good shape no he wasn't in good health either he had open heart surgery as well yeah so you know that's never never good you know i can't find the specific date when he uh died now well not sure why you know, yeah but he died around i would say like 2022 maybe 2021 COVID? no i don't think it was COVID? covid no no it was before covid not exactly sure no, now no not not covid uh, but no he's gone now he died and people were saying it was a suicide that he shot himself really that's what some people say yes whoa right that's, wow that's heavy it is it's pretty heavy duty but you know when you get old and everything starts breaking down on you you know that's the way it me, happens I'm gonna go out on a uh, january night here at eight thousand feet where it gets down to 30 below i'm gonna take off all my clothes and i'm just gonna go out there and fall asleep that's probably the best way to do it and i'm seeing here it was april 13th 2022 when uh that was the day of his uh death i believe oh, interesting. that's a shame yep um but you know all the uh torture methods all that sort of thing that all came from him yep yep it did yeah that's a really yep. uh strange subject in my opinion it's like uh you know yeah. we use all his tactics uh today still it's like do we thank him do we not thank him do we just get rid of him it's kind of like a almost like a bin laden in a way you know he was another guy that had you know an asset for the cia he even had his family flown away that morning when no one else could yeah. isn't that cute yeah yeah well you know i don't know you know uh kino's an interesting guy did a lot of bad things and very bad things uh, you know what i've heard i don't even want to repeat i don't either so I, I, he's probably in hell if that place if it exists, exists. yeah I, I would i would imagine that's where he would be if there was such a hell he would be there no doubt yep yeah the whole thing and he's starting the uh the church of set in san francisco yeah. while he's in the army intelligence and just really weird there is a lot of weirdness to it yes the church of satan and the temple of set both branches very odd very weird um that's a whole nother uh, subject here but by the way jay i forgot to mention you know it was nice to see you out there at a contact in the desert i had no idea that you would be out there so when i saw you i'm like that looks uh, like a very familiar character to me there and i'm like oh shit it's jay widener yep yeah i went out there i wanted to just kind of put my fingers on the pulse of the community and see where they were and um what'd you think nothing surprised me nothing really changed i mean it's kind of the same yep. sort of deal yep yeah it's the same old people saying the same thing you weren't not impressed really in other changed. words yeah yeah jay you, you you look like you were not impressed at all <laughs> it's <laughs> hilarious i wish people could see your face you're like you're over it yep i'm over it i hear you though i get I'm you over all of it yeah i, I don't blame you jay yeah i don't blame you um, but since we are on that subject, though, you know, aliens, UFOs, it's been, again, it comes in cycles. And here we are again, Jay, when all of this is in the papers again, like it was back with Roswell. This is like Roswell number two with all the things going on. Um, where do you stand with all this? Do you have all these whistleblowers coming out? Do you have all this footage coming out? Do you have people saying these are interdimensional beings? These are demonic in nature. Um, where do you stand with all the, all this? Um, unfolding right now jay well you have to understand that they can't um they've gone too far the elite or whoever they are they've gone too far they can't relinquish power ever because then we'll discover what they've done so they're they're amping it up they're raising the ante and um so this is a psyop i don't believe that uh i don't believe that that Grush or Grush or whatever his Grush. name is. I don't believe that he's lying. Yeah. But I don't believe that he's telling the truth either. And um, I have great, great reason to believe it just by doing a language uh, content analysis of his answers. They're very vague. And um, 
Oh, I think that's a psyop. I'm not saying there aren't aliens. I've been told by sure high up intelligence people that they're going to introduce the aliens to us. I think that's probably a psyop too. I hate to say it, um, but you know, I'll I'll keep watching and, and seeing. But I'm not uh, I'm not impressed. Right, I'm not entirely sold myself. I just find it fascinating that this is sort of like a mainstream topic out of nowhere. Well, it happened the day after uh, contact ended. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It happened on Tuesday. Contact ended on the Monday. And then Tuesday, all of a sudden, there's all these stories breaking out. And then every day, there was about another three or another four story. stories every day. Yeah, there's another whistleblower coming forward saying, now they retrieved bodies. Someone got killed. We shot them. We're hearing a new story every other day. But some of these stories we've heard uh, long ago, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all There's nothing you know. new that we're hearing. Yeah, it's true. And you know, I, I gotta I've gotta be honest, I'm quite critical of these aliens. I mean, really, you traveling across outer space in the most dangerous place in the universe, and then you get to Earth and you crash? It's like really? Right. Really? What's what the heck? I mean, there's more UFO crashes than there are airplane crashes. <laughs> right. So we're must be more highly intelligent than the people that are manning the ufos because the, we're not crashing airplanes left and right in fact we had a year i think 2013 or no 2020 or 2019 we didn't have any airplane fatalities that year so i mean i don't know i mean really why did the ufos have to take such sharp turns why do the ufos have lights on them um, if they want to be secret and not seen why do they have lights on why are they glowing why do they take sharp right turns? What's the point? I mean, none of it makes any sense. I mean, I don't disagree. Are, are, are the aliens that just like to show off? Um, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to make of it either. But going back to the whole uh, aliens and all these things are seen as demonic. I think a lot of that comes from Aleister Crowley. And when he was, you know, doing that whole a la mantra working and uh, conjuring up a uh, lamb. Lamb. Right. Yeah. So that's where that yeah, comes yeah, from. Yeah, I think so. Well, what people don't realize is that the mystery schools and the intelligence agencies have always been interested in each other. Yeah. And so what the mystery school people are doing is they're trying to open up um portals into other dimensions that's what they say that's what they're doing that's what their magic is about and in order to communicate with other intelligences that can give them viable information well well that's why intelligence agencies are interested because they're contacting other intelligences and that's what they're after is intelligence so of course the intelligence agencies are going to be interested in all of this occult stuff um, so they can get more information. This is where remote viewing came from right. and, and all this stuff. So um, there's always been a relationship between the two. Aleister Crowley was an agent for MI6. Uh, John D was an agent for the British, even though he was also the court astrologer. Um, uh, I, I'm pretty damn sure Madame Blavatsky was gathering intelligence for probably American or Russian intelligence agencies at the time. Um, and that's what you do. I mean, that's that's what they do. So uh, it shouldn't surprise anyone that um, the occult and the intelligence agencies Go hand are married hand. to each other. Yeah. And when you throw in the organized crime factor mm. and the fact that a lot of these organized crime people um, openly worship uh, Satan and Lucifer, and you got yourself a really heady cocktail. That you do. That you do. And it doesn't surprise me. You know, we have a long history here in the U.S. and other nations using remote viewers and doing all kinds of experiments. I mean, you do what you got to do to win the war, to win the fight. And every yeah. other government, they've, they're they already on it. You know, everyone's been doing this. And I was just about to ask you, are the Archons greys? A lot of people like to uh, present that idea out there. Uh, no, archons are not physical beings. They're uh, spiritual presences that they can occupy a human. However, um, but no, they're not. They're not physical um, as far as three D. Yeah, you know? some people believe that. I I just never really 
gone with that no. concept myself. No, the archons are like a um, uh, a wave of insects that uh, mm. descend down, spiritual insects. A parasite of sorts, yeah. Parasite, yeah, that's descend down into agitated situations to make that situation more agitated so they can live off of the negative energy being generated. And what do we have right now? Lots of negative energy. That's all we have. That's what the archons are in the best place they've ever been right now. Oh, yeah. That's why we have to learn to love each other and, and, and forgive. That really is the message. I think you're right about that. I, I see people just completely losing it every single day now. People are just yeah. irritated. They're pissed off all the time. People are on the edge, you know, and that's that's dangerous, you know. Uh, someone in a heavy, well, someone in a car is dangerous right now. I heard from that same person I was telling you about earlier, this medical uh, investigator, that I, I don't want to use the word because I'm not a, uh, a doctor. I hear you. But they're putting, they discovered that the um, cartels are adding in the zombie drug into the fentanyl. Oh, so okay. The, yeah, you know the, the zombie drug that was out like a the few trank years ago? Yeah. or whatever it's called, the crocodile, yeah, the trank, yeah, 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 all these yeah. things. Yeah, and that that is why the homeless, like in San Francisco, are so zombie-like. Yeah, because they've all been turned into zombies by the uh, by the Chinese by the cocktails that they're taking. Yeah. Right, and all the fentanyl that's coming through. You know, you get a lot of it out here. You get it all all over the place, really, and everywhere. Oh, and you yeah. know, the, there's an astonishing coincidence. Against it was this person that told me this. Mm -hmm. The same exact moment, almost the same exact moment that the medical establishment, this is about seven years ago, decided that they were no longer going to give out painkillers. Mm. It was the same exact time that the cartels began bringing in the fentanyl, the fake opiates, mm. into the country. So people that are in deep pain uh, from injuries or whatever are going to the doctor and he's and they're saying you just go home and take advil i can't give you anything else which is exactly what's going on everywhere right now and so they go home and the advil isn't enough to get rid of the deep pain especially if it's a spinal injury or a head injury and so then the drug dealer down the street you know starts waving the fentanyl mm. in front of them and they realize that there is a painkiller available and then the next rest is history that's terrible but yeah, as but as true. you know, we are the biggest importers and exporters of drugs. So, you know, we are allowing we are. this to happen, which is uh, insane. And, you know, a lot of people out there want to say, why, why don't we just go and control the border? You know, why don't we go and just take out all the cartels? And I just I can't help but giggle. I mean, how else do you think we afford so many black projects out there? You know, these blacklisted projects that we have uh, and yep. the war in the Ukraine. I mean, it goes on and on with yeah. all this uh, dirty money funds. For us, you think we, we, you don't think we don't know exactly who is running the cartels, where they live, <laughs> exactly and everything about them. Of course, we do. We follow right. them with satellites everywhere they go. We could take them out anytime we wanted. They're ours. <laughs> yep, just like Bin Laden. He yeah, was... exactly. They're the mob. We're the the mob runs everything now. Everything yeah. is run by the syndicate, and there's nothing you can do about it. The syndicate doesn't care about anything but profits. They don't care about your country. They don't care about... It. Well, I'll take that back. I want to be clear about that. There is a war between two organized crime families, okay? There's the one family that wants to um, take over the world yeah. and control the entire world, one group of organized crime people. Then there's this other group that says, no, that's wrong because the Chinese will stop us and the... Uh, all the indigenous people out there will stop us. Why should we bother running those countries when they're crappy little countries? Let's just concentrate on the United States. Trump is represents that group. Okay, so they they just want the mob to run the United States and to keep the United States as kind of a, a safe place from the rest of the world. The other mob wants, and they're failing. The international mob that wants to take over the world uh, is fighting the domestic mob, but the international mob is losing on the world scene. So um, they're winning on the domestic scene. They're arresting Donald Trump, sure. the J6 people and all that. And that's the international mob trying to stop the domestic mob from gaining power 
and um, they're winning here domestically right now, but I don't know if that's going to last for long, um, but they're losing on the world stage. The Chinese have already told them, go away. We're not going to do join your little stupid uh, new world order. We're a 5,000 year long culture and uh, we don't take orders from people of European blood. So just keep the hell out of here. And so they're losing on the international front. And so they're focusing on the domestic mob and getting rid of them right now, but they're committing suicide. And if the domestic people wait long enough and just bide their time, they're going to win that war. And by the way, another thing I wanted to ask you here, uh, do you think that war will you know, unfold here between... Uh, you know, what... Oh, no. If you're hearing this now, that means we have already skipped over to Patreon. If you want the rest of this interview, please go to patreon.com forward slash Michael Deacon and subscribe and join us. We'd love to see you out there. Remember, you can subscribe for as low as a dollar up to five. Oh.